In this tutorial, we are going to practice multiplying a fraction by another fraction, as well as multiplying fractions by mixed numbers, and multiplying a mixed number by a mixed number. In the first example, we have the fraction 1 half multiplied by 1 fourth. Now to quickly get your answer, all you really have to do is multiply the numerator by the numerator to get your numerator, and 1 times 1 is equal to 1, and then multiply the denominators together to get your denominator. And 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So we would say that 1 half multiplied by 1 fourth is equal to 1 eighth. Another way that we may interpret this problem is by figuring out what 1 half of 1 quarter is. The operation of multiplication in math can also be considered the word of. So whenever you see a multiplication sign, you can replace that with the word of. So we may ask ourselves, what is one half of one quarter? And we can demonstrate this by drawing a fraction model. So what I'm going to do over here is draw the representation of one fourth or one quarter. So there's half, and we cut this in half the long way, so we have quarters. And we would say that one of these sections represents one quarter. And we want to ask ourselves, what would be one half of one quarter? Well, what we're going to do is take this one quarter and break it directly in half. And then we would take one half of that one quarter. And now we have to figure out, relative to the entire whole, what does this new shaded piece represent? If we were to draw sections that are the same size as what we shaded below here, we would see that the entire whole is broken into eighths, and the shaded section represents one-eighth. So we can see that half of this quarter right here represents one-eighth of the total. Let's do another example. In this example, we have three-fourths multiplied by one-half. So basically, we are trying to figure out what three quarters of one half is equal to. So once again, we can multiply the numerators together to get our numerator. And three times one is three. And the product of the denominators, four and two, would give us eight. So if we were to figure out what three quarters of one half is, that would be equal to three eighths. Now, let's draw a fraction model to represent this. The fraction model that you draw should represent the second fraction in your problem, in this case, one half. So I am going to divide this whole in half. And then I am going to shade that half right there. And now we have to figure out what three quarters of this half is equal to. So what we are going to do is break this half into quarters and then shade three of those quarters. So we have to break this into four equal parts. And now we have quarters. And then we are going to shade three of those quarters. And now we have to figure out, relative to the entire hole that we started with, how much does the new shaded portion represent out of the hole? And to make this easier, we should draw pieces that are the same size. So I'm going to extend these lines over to the side so we have pieces that are the same size. Now that we have a total of eight pieces, we can clearly see that three out of the eight pieces are shaded in. So we can see that three quarters of one half is equal to three eighths. Now that we have the basic premise of multiplying fractions down, what we are going to do is multiply two fractions that have larger numbers to deal with. Now you are often asked to express your answer in simplest form or simplest terms. And if we were to multiply 24 times 15 to get our numerator and 25 times 16 to get our denominator, we would have a lot of reducing to do. So what we are going to do is reduce from within the problem. And the process that we are going to do when reducing before we actually get an answer is called cancellation. This process is going to make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to expressing our answer in lowest terms. So 
One way to go about this is to look at a number at the top and find a number at the bottom that share a common factor. For example, to make 24, we could multiply 3 times 8. And to produce a 16 on the bottom, we could multiply 2 times 8. And the reason I started with these two numbers is because they share a common factor of 8. We would say that 8 can be divided into 24 three times, and on the bottom, 8 can be divided into 16 two times. So when you find one number at the top and one number at the bottom with a common factor, you can cancel out those numbers, and you can also cancel out the common factor as well. And what you have remaining are the numbers that you are going to keep. Let's see if we can do this with the numbers 15 at the top and 25 at the bottom. First, you have to identify what a common factor is. And if you can see it, always start with the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor of 15 and 25 is 5. Now, before, I wrote the factor pair that produced each number. Like for 15, I would have written 3 times 5, and for 25, 5 times 5. But what you can do is keep the common factor in your head and just mentally figure out how many times that common factor fits inside each number. For example, 5 fits into 15 three times, and the number of times that common factor fits inside is what you write by the number. So the common factor of 5 fits into 15 three times, and the common factor of 5 fits into 25 five times. And at the end, what you do is you multiply what you have remaining straight across to get your numerator. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And for the denominator, we have 5 times 2, and that is equal to 10. So 24 25ths multiplied by 15 16 is equal to 9 tenths. Let's try another example. This time we have 5 eighths being multiplied by 8 15 So what we have to do is pick one number at the top and one number at the bottom that share a common factor. 5 and 15 share a common factor of 5, and 5 can be divided into itself one time. 5 can be divided into 15 three times. Now we have an 8 at the top and an 8 at the bottom as well. Whenever you see a number at the top and a number at the bottom that are identical, you can quickly cross both of those numbers out and change them both to the number 1. And this is because if I were to ask, what is the greatest common factor of 8 and 8, of course, that answer would be itself, in this case, 8. 8 goes into 8 once, and 8 fits into 8 once as well down here. But if you recognize that they are both the same number, just cross them out really quickly and turn them both into 1s. Now we multiply what our remaining numerators are to get our new numerator, and 1 times 1 is equal to 1, and on the bottom we have 1 times 3, and that is equal to 3. So 5 eighths multiplied by 8 fifteenths is equivalent to 1 third. Now let's try another example, but in this example we are multiplying three fractions together. But the same rules still apply. What you have to do is select one numerator and one denominator that share a common factor. One thing that sticks out right away is the number 5 on the top and the number 10 at the bottom. The greatest common factor of 5 and 10 is 5. But another way that you can think about it is like this. You can regard the number 5 at the top and 10 at the bottom as it were a fraction. If you were to reduce 5 over 10, we can just say that that's 1 half. So we could cross off the 5 and cross out the 10 and change that to 1 half. So it's just like reducing fractions hidden from within the problem. We could also do this with numbers that we actually write. So after you write a number, after crossing out a number, those numbers are fair game as well. We have a 2 on the top and a 2 at the bottom. And because they are the same, we can cancel both of those out and turn each of those into the number 1. Now we have a 9 remaining at the top. And 9 shares a common factor with this 3 here, or we could say that the 9 shares a common factor with this 6 over here. 
But you can't cross this 9 out with both numbers. You can only do one number at the top with one number at the bottom at a time. So let's start with the 9 and the 6. Both of those numbers share a common factor of 3. And 3 can be divided into 9 a total of 3 times. And 3 can be divided into 6 a total of 2 times. Now we have a 3 remaining at the top, but we should recognize that there is also a 3 at the bottom. And because they are identical, we may cross both of those out and change them to the number 1. Now because we have only 1's remaining at the top, we cannot reduce any of those further. So we know that we are finished with cancellation with this problem. So we are going to multiply the 1's straight across to get our numerator. And 1 times 1 times 1 is equal to 1. And on the bottom, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So the original problem, 5 sixths times 9 tenths times 2 thirds is equal to 1 half. Now let's do an example involving a mixed number. In this problem, we have 2 and 2 thirds multiplied by 3 eighths. Now before you proceed to multiply a fraction with a mixed number, you have to rename any mixed number as an improper fraction. And the first thing that you do when renaming a mixed number is write the denominator exactly the same. Because we are working with thirds, we are going to keep our improper fraction that we are going to get in terms of thirds. Now to get our numerator, it is a quick two-step process. We start by multiplying our denominator by our whole number and 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And after we get that product, we add that total to whatever the numerator is on the top of our mixed number. And because we have a number 2 here, we have to add that to the number 6. And 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. So we would say that 8 thirds is really the same thing as 2 and 2 thirds. And next we have to multiply this by 3 eighths. After you have renamed any mixed number as an improper fraction, you may apply any rules of cancellation to the problem. And as you can see, we have identical numbers on the bottom and the top here. We have a 3 on the bottom and the top, so we can quickly change those to the number 1. And we can do the same thing with the 8s as well. So we cross both of these 8s out and turn those to the number 1. And because we have 1s on the top, we have a product of 1. And on the bottom, we also get a product of 1. And anything divided by itself is always going to be equal to 1. Let's try one last example. With this example, we are multiplying a mixed number by another mixed number. Now one thing I like to do before multiplying any mixed number by another mixed number is estimating to see what my answer should be close to. Now if I were to round 6 and 2 ninths to the nearest whole number, I would say that that is closest to 6. And rounding 3 and 6 sevenths to the nearest whole number, we would say that that is close to the number 4. So what I would do is multiply 6 times 4 to get an estimate, and that product would be 24. So before I even do any work, I know that my answer should be somewhere around the number 24. Let's start by renaming each of these mixed numbers as improper fractions. We start by rewriting the denominator exactly as is. We have a 9 here for our denominator. And over here we have a 7. So this problem is going to be in terms of ninths and sevenths. To get our numerator, we multiply the denominator by our whole number. 6 times 9 is 54. And 54 plus 2 is equal to 56. And for this numerator, we multiply 7 times 3, which is 21. And 21 plus that 6 is equal to 27. Now what we do is we explore this problem looking for common factors so we can apply the rules of cancellation. 9 and 27 have a greatest common factor of 9. And 9 fits into itself one time. And 9 fits into 27 a total of three times. 56 and 7 share the greatest common factor of 7. 7 can be divided into itself once. And 7 may be divided into 56, a total of 8 times. So the numerators that we have remaining are 8 and 3, and the product of 8 and 3 is 24. 
And on the bottom, we have 1 times 1, and that is equal to 1. So in the end, we have 24 divided by 1, which is equal to 24. And that actually matches the estimate that we came up with before we even multiplied anything. So when multiplying fractions, remember, you may only cancel out one number at the top with one number at the bottom that share a common factor. And with problems involving mixed numbers, you must rename those mixed numbers as improper fractions first, and then you can search for a numerator and a denominator that share common factors so you may cancel those out as well.